Well, it's a real pleasure of being here, and in, indeed, it's a moment of being proud when looking back. Um, at the same time, given the fact that we are in one of the first work packages, it also means that hopefully we have already done a lot of dissemination. And actually, if you, at this point in time, haven't seen any of the slides that are going to pass by, we didn't do a good job. <laughs> so part of it, it's going to be repetition, but also celebrating the fact that we achieved it. <laughs> um, and uh, with Work Package 1, I think the first thing we started with, and we shouldn't forget, that RRI is a response to a problem. Basically, we are happy with science and innovation, but it could do better. So, it is nice to have it, but basically we feel that there is something that could improve between the interface between science and society. Basically because there are concerns, there are negative consequences, but also very much mismatches. Mismatches in the sense that we have um, a societal demand which is not being taken up by science, and we have innovations that are not being taken up by society. So please, for better science, are at the really heart of RRI. And then we are needing to address two gaps. And these two gaps are the following. The, the, basically, we see a, a, an innovation process which has three compartments. We have the problem, which is part of society. We have research, the academia, and we have the implementation letter later on, again, society. And that really are different worlds. So far, we have seen it in many cases, there are clear gaps. It really has a demand gap and an implementation gap. And the first thing we thought was we need to communicate better because there's a lack of communication between these different compartments. So, listen better is the first one. And the second one is sell your product better, basically. Um, we all know that this doesn't do the job and we have to move it further. It's all about collaboration. And that's what RRI is about. Basically, we are all in it in a collaborative effort of jointly pursuing science and technology. So the, the new turn to it is very much that we view the demand gap and we view the implementation gap and say the only way of doing this, of moving beyond these gaps, is collaborating, co-creating as partners. And here, what we had to do with uh, the RRI Tools project is saying, well, we are not starting from scratch. The whole idea of collaboratively looking at science and technology with society, for society and society, is having a tradition of 20, 30 years. And basically, we have three main traditions we had to bring together. And um, the first one is, of course, the European Union tradition you're already talking about. The whole idea of science in society, for society, with society, the, the, the grand societal challenges that we need to address, that the European Commission wants to address. We have the six keys that were there, previous traditions already in different programs on gender, on ethics, on science education, that already had a lot of elements in it which were moving towards responsible research and innovation. We had the scientific community already doing quite a lot. Some of the conceptualization very well given by Ulrike. The, the whole sense of this responsibility. Um, but also public engagement. But also in society, we had seen trends towards social and corporate responsibility, towards sustainable development, which also were going on and, and need to be referred to. When you go out, and when we did this with, with in the many workshops and in the many interviews uh, that we did, um, and you talk to all these different stakeholders, what they will say, well, we had sustainable development already, so what is this going to add to it? Or we already have corporate social responsibility. 
And basically, what we can say is that it's the collective turn that really makes a difference. Not anymore the individual responsibility, but the collective responsibility in a partnership. Full partnership across the stakeholders. Now, what then does that mean if you want to make a definition? And basically, we started with the very old definition, in, old in the sense of RRI. We're now talking about 2011. That's old for, in RRI sense. Um, it was basically making a difference between process, the first ones, process and outcomes. And that became the basics of our definition. Making a difference between the process that leads to certain preferred outcomes. And these outcomes we define as follows. We have clearly the ultimate impact we want to reach. So all RRI processes need to have that orientation towards the final impact of really solving societal problems. And for that, we need certain socially acceptable outcomes, ethically acceptable outcomes, and we need environmentally sustainable outcomes. What we did extra in the project is that we are looking also at learning outcomes. When we're going for joint efforts, it means that science and technology very much becomes a collaborative learning process. It is something that we do together. And so also learning outcomes need to be part of the definition. Learning as engaged citizens, because each and every one of us as stakeholders needs to be able to take part in these types of processes. And we also need responsible actors, and that means the broader stakeholders and their institutions. And working towards these three is just as important as working towards the final results, the final impact. We say these are necessary to reach the ultimate outcomes. This one is also should be very familiar. Yeah? <laughs> We've done our best to communicate it. Here we see the six keys, which we say are cross-cutting issues in the process. Attention for gender, open access, governance, etc., is part and parcel of RRI very much as cross-cutting themes. Here we see the um, elements coming back of Jack Stilgo et al., which you already mentioned, which have been slightly elaborated as diversity and inclusion, anticipation and reflection, openness and transparency, and responsiveness and adaptive change. So really, and here we don't only say inclusion, but we have added explicitly diversity, because diversity matters. If you only have a few stakeholders involved, your process doesn't become very holistic. So besides the inclusion, it also has to do with diversity. Openness and transparency, because we really want to make sure that communication is open and people have the same access to information. Not in the sense that we put everything on the web without showing how to access it. Openness should be really meaningful to each and every stakeholder. So that means very much stakeholder-specific uh, communication. Anticipation and reflection about the possible futures. At the same time, the learning processes through the reflection, which in the end should lead to responsiveness and adaptive change. However, are we there then? Because basically, this is conceptualization. and doesn't give it hands and feet. It basically says, OK, are we on the same par here? Do we all agree more or less that we feel this should be part and parcel of the definition? When we came to that point, yes, this was more or less a consensus within the consortium and through the hubs, we needed to give it a bit further, take it up and say, okay, how can we then work with these, specifically these factors, and help projects work with that? Although projectification, I'm sorry, but we first thought of projects as a first step. <laughs> How can you give it um, hands and feet in this project form? And basically what we did was 
turn this process, criteria, process requirements into criteria. And criteria, there we go into the danger of tick boxing. Huh? So, okay, this is a criteria. Okay, I've got it, got it, got it. Here we say specifically it's a thinking tool. It's a tool for reflection. It doesn't say that it has some kind of bar that that is good and that is bad. No, it is something you discuss together. Because what is good is only known through the narrative you collectively make. So the collective turn is in what do we consider inclusion and diversity. So which stakeholder groups are involved, etc., etc. You can do it evaluatively. So in the end, look at it back and say, is this a good RRI project? Or you could, can help you shape the project. This is actually when we, when we have this, um, uh, the, 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 the Efari um, award, um, this is actually what we tried to use. And what we found out is that we interpreted each and every one of the criteria differently. Because you can. <laughs> we are not on par all with how we interpret the criteria. It's also a matter of weighing. Some of us in the committee would say, well, you know, public engagement and all the diversity and inclusion, that's most important. Other ones would say, you yeah, know, the responsiveness, the, the, the way the ethical reflection takes place is most important. Others say, well, if you take the outcomes uh, and you look at the process, actually, I think the outcomes are more important than the process. So if it is a really innovative outcome that has a real potential of really addressing the challenge, then it's then the process might be perhaps a bit less uh, high on the RRI uh, process criteria. So it doesn't mean that with these types of criteria we foreclose discussion. Not at all. It's a continuing discussion which needs to take place. But it does mean we think that asking questions about, for example, in this case, engaging a variety of stakeholder groups. So, do we have this wide range on board? Who is actually in our project? And how are we, in that case, are including that person? What methods do we have in place to do that? Are we really bringing in the relevant voices, also the silent voices? Do we have the really... Do we, are we, do we, did we also include people with social, low socioeconomic strata? Or did we only actually include the higher educated ones? And all those questions is a tool for reflection. So please consider it in that way and not as a bar and a tick box. Yeah? The next thing we did in this part was actually trying to find out, um, okay, it would be nice to showcase things. Because if we have the criteria, we have the thinking tool, could we give people examples of what a good practice could look like to help, to, to inspire. Um, that was an important task for the hubs that actually collected a lot of examples, uh, making it into a survey and giving all the details. And then 31 were selected to put into a living catalog. And when we had all the different examples, we found out that basically there are more or less three different types of examples. Examples that are showing projects related to the governance of RRI. Other projects are very much about the doing RRI in a research and innovation context directly. And others were more about the learning part. So providing all sorts of conditions to make RRI work, like science education. So really contributing to the scientific citizens, the, so the, the, the one that can really reflect or trying to have um, researchers more engaged with society. And those, and for each and every one, we saw different actors involved and we collected those examples. That doesn't mean that the examples were perfect in all sense, like in one of the, I'll show you just one of them we had here is uh, Vinova, uh, an, a Swedish uh, project, uh, actually more of a program, an agency, um, and you see there that actually it was included because it was so incredibly strong in responsiveness and adaptive change. So actually it highlights one specific 
process requirements very well. Um, however, we shouldn't forget, um, and then is actually the link to the next part, that uh, we are not there if we come up with a wonderful, uh, nicely, broadly shared definition, criteria, and some inspiring cases. During our discussions that we had around, and I think Melanie might uh, agree with that as well, she might follow up on that, is that we came actually a lot across a lot of skepticism. Skepticism about um, the fear that it will take over science and that the more fundamental science, the science for knowledge, let's say, instead of science for society, would actually wither away and be taken over. Um, uh, that it's not, uh, that it's actually, RRI is actually applied research. It doesn't have anything to do with basic research. Um, the idea that, um, uh, wait a minute, we are already responsible. Why, why do you say we're not responsible? Uh, are we not doing well? Uh, but also, um, it's nothing new, we already do it. But basically also, wait a minute, the extra bags that you were talking about, Ulrika, with all the, this man, with all these suitcases there, uh, do all researchers need exactly know how to do this? All these competences of engaging, uh, identifying and engaging with all these stakeholders. Um, the idea that it's not only the scientists that need all to have all these comp competencies, but all these citizens and stakeholders in society also need competences to do it. So basically what we are up against is that we need to do a lot of um, advocacy, a lot of competency building, but also a lot of discussion. It cannot be that we top down say to researchers, you have to do RRI. It is, it was a surprise we, when we did when one of our projects, it was actually the researchers which were left out in the discussions a lot. The ones within the faculties of science I said, well, what's that thing called RRI? We don't know. And uh, so it's, we cannot bypass researchers. We cannot bypass pol policy makers. Also, the development of RRI needs to be RRI in itself. It needs to be a continuous dialogue, a continuous reflexive process. And I think now, Melanie, this is where you pick it up. <laughs> and thank you very much. <laughs>